Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a very momentous day and a celebratory day. Thank you all for being here. We'd like to welcome in all the live audiences that are viewing this, the festivities online on SNY, as well as all the Met social channels. We will begin with calling upon Mets team president, Sandy Alderson, to offer first comments. Please, Sandy. No, you can uh, do it right in your spot there. Welcome, everybody. Uh, on behalf of uh, Steve and Alex Cohen, the Mets organization, and myself personally, uh, I want to welcome all of you and uh, <clears throat> congratulate all of our honorees, John Matlack, Ron Darling, Edgardo Afonso, and Al Jackson. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, others in attendance here, uh, Ray Ordonez, Carlos Baerga, and Reggie Jackson, Al's son. <clears throat> I was a uh, history major in college, and uh, so I'm always especially pleased to uh, honor our Mets history, and particularly by recognizing past individual greatness. We have three decades represented here, uh, <clears throat> the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s. John Matlack was Rookie of the Year in 1972. He won two games in the 1973 postseason. He's an all-star game MVP and double-digit winner for five straight years, which we all know how valuable that can be. Ron Darling, fourth in team history and wins with 99, top 10 in many pitching categories. Postseason winner, all-star, gold glove winner, <clears throat> and with SNY since 2006. Many of you may not know that uh, I traded for Ron Darling in 1991. <laughs> he came to the Oakland A's. He spent the uh, better part of five years with the A's. And I was telling Ron that uh, aside from Ricky Henderson, I think he's the one with whom I had the most transactions because I re-signed him twice after trading for him. <laughs> so he's right up there with Ricky in terms of uh, frequency. <clears throat> Edgardo Alfonso, postseason phenom. Top 10 in many hitting categories with the Mets. Silver Slugger, winner, all-star. Congratulations, Edgardo. Al Jackson, we have the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s represented. And Al Jackson rep represented the ages. Uh, <clears throat> 50 years with the Mets. Uh, <clears throat> passed away in 2019, major league coach, minor league coordinator, front office advisor. I had the pleasure for most of 2011 through 2019 to have a locker in spring training right across from Al. And uh, <clears throat> I can tell you I benefited from his wisdom, enjoyed his humor, and respected the man. Uh, he was truly a great and an honor to know. So with that, I want to turn it over to uh, Harold and uh, our inductees and congratulate them one more time. Uh, it's thrilled to be on the dais with them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy. We will uh, go next to the three-time All-Star with the Mets, Mr. John Matlack. John, if you'll offer up some words. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. They finally found a way to get me out of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I've been living 15 years now, about four hours north up in the Adirondack Mountains, and uh, it's sort of nice to see the city again. This is a tremendous honor, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, Thank you, John. Ron, please, sorry. Uh, if you would uh, offer up some comments next. Well, first, I'm, I'm just happy to be going in with, with John and Edgardo. Um, I'm really honored to be in between these two men. I know what they brought to the organization. I know history too, Sandy, and, and it's, uh, these guys are not only great players, but intelligent players. Um, uh, so it's great to be up here with them. And um, it's kind of weird, you know, um, Hall of Fame, and come to celebrate it, the place I work. So um, it's, a, it's a kind of a funny thing, but I'm so proud and so happy. Um, I was a player for nine years, almost 10 years here been in the booth for it's my 16th year, so it's over 25 years, almost half my life I've been part of this organization. I'm very proud of that. 
Thank you, Ron. Edgardo, please, the stage is yours. Um, well, this is uh, it's a great honor uh, to be here today in front of you guys. Um, um, I play in the old Shea Stadium. <laughs> it's different. It's this different uh, atmosphere, you know, because um, this is the play that I start with, and I feel so happy to uh, to be part of this great uh, great event and and uh, you know going going in with uh, two legends. <laughs> Definitely uh, is, is a pleasure, uh, and I spent my whole time here in New York. I love this city so much. Uh, I was uh, play for the Mets, and this uh, considered myself uh, a home for me and my family. And the last uh, two months, we decided to go back to. I uh, mean, but by now, finally get my wife to get out of New York and go through uh, Florida. But uh, I still love New York, and thinking about in the future to coming back here. So. Uh, it's a great honor to be here tonight. Thank you, Edgardo, and thank you to all our gentlemen. So our inductees would be glad to take your questions. We have mics on each side of the room. Please raise your hand. A mic will be brought to you, and if you'll uh, kindly state your name and affiliation prior to your question. I think uh, let's start over to the left. Uh, Steve? Uh, Steve Gelbs, SNY, especially for Ron. I want to make sure that, that you know that. <laughs> uh, congratulations to, to all three of you, and I guess this is kind of a general question to start with all three of you. I know that, that originally this was supposed to happen a year ago, um, so it's been a, a long time, but as the anticipation started to grow and, and you guys have started to think about it more and more, just what does an honor like this mean to you? You? Um, I, I just think... Um, I didn't really realize till I uh, got the call that I was going in the Hall of Fame last year um, that I do have a place here. You know, I have a place in the history of this organization because you just, I don't know, you don't think about things like that. You don't think about legacies or any of that stuff while you're living your life. But when something like that happens, it really makes you sit back and go, wow. I mean, I'm really honored that they would think of me in that way. I'm honored that uh, um, people believe I belong here. and. Uh, it's just, um, I don't know, like I'm overjoyed, really. And uh, it's, it's hard for me to get real overjoyed, but I'm overjoyed. John? John? I don't know that I could say anything different, really. It, it, <laughs> I made a statement to somebody, did an interview on the phone with not too long ago, that I feel like I'm more of a big deal now at 71 than I was at 27 or 28. Um, and I guess back when you're playing, you don't spend as much time focusing on things that happened and when you reflect back on them years later uh, and other people have flavored what has happened uh, it takes on a different color and, and it's really sort of special and I'm truly honored to be part of this group and going into the Mets Hall of Fame uh, it's something I'll treasure forever no doubt um, to me uh, I was waiting one year for this moment <laughs> <laughs> Um, the soon I got a call from uh, from the previous owners, um, that was something that I was watching TV and and I got the phone. I got to the phone and and when I when I received the news, um, I, I, you know, tears coming to my eyes because uh, when you when you play baseball, I mean, especially myself, when I play here, I never thinking about Hall of Fame or nothing like that. Just thinking about like try to do my best uh, for the organization, for the team that I play for, and when you hear. Um, um, News like that is coming tears to my eyes. My my wife, she was worried about. She said, "Well, something happened," <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "No, don't worry. Something good happened." And, and and to me, that's that. Like I said before, that's a great honor to to be part of uh, this great group. This uh, being Hall of Fame in this great organization. Um, you know, being a kid from Venezuela, 17 years old, coming after a dream to try to play in the pro pro baseball. No thinking about big leagues. I thought. Pro baseball, and uh, four years later, playing the big leagues, coming to Shea Stadium, in front of great fans in New York. So to me, this is the dream come true. You know, so so happy for and looking forward to uh, to get it done with. You know. <laughs> Who's next? Don't be shy. Go ahead in the middle here. Greg Prince, Faith and Fear in Flushing. I'd like to kind of follow up on a little something uh, Fonzie just said about the fans. 
I was wondering what your impressions are after all these years of the people you played in front of and maybe how they differed from when you went to other teams. What you know, what what you remember about Mets fans, I suppose. Is that for? For everybody? Yeah. I, I think they're fair and knowledgeable. Um, I found that as long as they felt like you put a good effort forth, you weren't necessarily in a position where you had to win all the time. But as long as you weren't slighting the job, uh, you were treated fairly. And I respect that uh, tremendously. And I, I do think the, the knowledgeable fan is here in New York more so than some other places. Uh, there were people telling me statistics that I had to look up to remember. Uh, and they knew them off the top of their head. So it was pretty incredible. I, I think for me, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a unique experience because I played uh, during a kind of a golden time here, you know, when 40 and 50,000 people were coming to the ballpark each and every night. Um, so when you're in the middle of playing, I don't know if these guys feel the same, when you're in the middle of playing, your relationship with the fans um, are, you love that they're there, but you don't really, you know, understand the fan, you don't think about the fan, you're thinking about how am I going to get someone out or not be sent down or whatever. Um, but when you become a broadcaster, it's a whole different deal, right, for me. So, you know, I'm in people's homes, um, uh, Gary, Keith, and I are. And uh, the, my relationship with fans who come up now, um, I think I used to have a little bit of celebrity. I think I have the lowest form of celebrity now because people feel like I'm part of their home. So they just uh, have no problem coming up and, and talking and all that stuff. So it's, it's, um, it's been a kind of a, a, a full circle, come full circle for me, and it's been great. Edgardo? Somebody call me right now. Um, <laughs> I, think, uh, uh, I think New York fans, they, they're so special. Uh, to me, I think they, um, uh, they, sh they, they teach me or they show me or they told me how to, how to play the game. And to me, that's uh, way important because uh, sometimes when you don't feel like you guys might feel that way, but you don't feel like you in those days, then then, then the efforts are not 100 percent. They let you know right away. So that's why it make the fan, New York fans uh, so special, especially the, the Mets fan. And to me, I think it's, it's more important. I think the fans uh, make you a better player, better pe person. And um, I always try to give back the fans what they give to me. So, so even when I left from New York, uh, when I went to San Francisco, that was that was really hard, painful for me. But you know, it's part of the, the business, the game. And, and you know, back in those days, it was really expensive to go into the like New York Time or, or Newsday to get a like page and say like you know, thank you New York fans. And I went to a uh, Jello Cap. <laughs> it was more cheap. <laughs> I think it was more, much better. And, and, and you know, I, I feel so happy. Then, then, then I said, you know, thanks to New York fans because the great support that I always have here, uh, playing for the Mets, uh, it was great. And they show me, and they teach me, like I said, to be a better player, better, better person. So, so happy for. Them. Thank you. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, Ed Randall, Sirius XM. Uh, I'd like to ask John. Can you please talk about what it was like to be part of that pitching staff, the greatest pitching staff in the franchise's history, hanging around with Tom and with Kuzman and on down the line? It, you couldn't ask for a better spot to be in, especially as a young pitcher. Um, they put my locker in between Tom and Jerry when I got called up, and it was a tremendous learning experience. Um, a great example set by them and those that pitched with them. Um, and it was something that you never wanted to be the one that was the weak link in the chain. Uh, Tom would pitch a good game. Jerry might pitch one that was similar. And, and if I'm following, I don't want to be the guy to let anybody down. So I'm trying my best to do the same. And supposedly whoever's following me is going to pick up on that. And I think it just bred for better playing all the way around. Uh, Tommy was great to philosophize with, talk about the uh, Strength training, sleep, eating habits, that type of stuff, theorizing about the game. Kuzi was phenomenal in terms of how do we pitch this guy and, and what success he had getting that guy out, that type of thing. So I was in a great spot and a tremendous way to learn. Rich? 
Rich Catino, ESPN Radio. Um, John, this question is for you. 73 is such a great historic season for the Mets. And you take us through that a little bit. And as you guys are in last most of the summer, you guys kind of make that foray and then, you know, beat a Hall of Fame laden Reds team in the NLCS. Can you talk about how that summer went and tug and everything that went on in that year and how special that is? Well, it's definitely special to even have gotten to that situation. We were so far behind so late in the year. Um, I don't know necessarily the chronology of how things led up to that point, except that when you look back on it, I think each team in the division took their turn being in first place. We took ours when it counted. Um, and to get there, we had to play very well at the end, and we're capable of doing that. Uh, it all started for me when we were playing Pittsburgh one night, and the ball got hit to left field that didn't go out. It hit on the corner of the fence and came back in. Made a play at the plate, threw a guy out, turned that game around. We started playing better. No matter what happened from there on, it seemed like somebody was equal to the task. They were going to do whatever it took to get us in the right spot to win. Um, weren't supposed to get past the Reds, but uh, being a pitcher, I will have to say that pitching and defense will beat offense most times if you do it right, and we did it right. So we got past the Reds. Um, Should have beat the A's all six of those first games, in my view. <laughs> they, they did not come to play until game seven, but they came in game seven. Uh, unfortunately, we had to get to that point. <laughs> But it was a special year. I mean, Tug, with the you got to believe uh, the vivaciousness of his personality um, stemming out of that meeting. It whether it had a true impact as we went forward, it certainly didn't hurt. But for me, it was that night against Pittsburgh where the ball did not leave the stadium but came back in. Go ahead, gentlemen. Andy Esposito, New York Sports Day. I was actually going to ask something similar to all three of you, but with John as well. Your favorite postseason experiences? All three of you had the pleasure of playing in the postseason. So what do you first think about when you think about those favorite postseason experiences? And Ron, I know yours is the dog pile at the end of 86, but... That, what, not, that's not true. Okay. Um, you know, that, that was amazing. And, of course, the end result of winning a Game 7, of course, is great. But uh, Game 6 in Houston is a game I didn't participate in. It's the greatest game I ever saw in person. Um, it was just uh, something that you couldn't even really believe was happening. And from the ninth inning on, the fans of Houston, now this is in the Astrodome, a full Astrodome now, um, were standing on their feet from the ninth <coughs> inning to the 16th inning. Uh, when I got home to New York, my friends were telling me they were at these places like Crazy Eddie's, right? And they were standing and they were not taking the train and they were uh, throngs of people that were in the streets watching the TV on Crazy Eddie's, watching that game. So it was, um, uh, to me, that was, uh, I didn't even participate in it. It was the greatest game I ever saw. Go ahead. Um, I have a few. Um, uh, one of the, one of the uh, me personally, that I really enjoy it, and it was uh, my first time in playoff uh, was against, um, first of all, we have an extra game against Cincinnati. Uh, at Cincinnati, if we win that game, we want to uh, face Arizona. So when you th that year, we f when you heard Arizona word, I mean we, the team, you thinking about Randy Johnson and Kurt Chilling. That was that was really bad. I mean that was really. <laughs> but um, I remember my first my first uh, game in the playoff of after after eighty something after eighty six. Uh, that was when the Mets, uh, the fans started enjoy baseball back in in, in Mets uh, uh, size, this and this side Queen size. Um, I remember my first at bat, uh, I hit a home run. That was a great feeling uh, uh, when I run around the base. Um, and the last, uh, my last at bat, it was uh, bases loading. Um, that was the first game of the playoff, and I hit a grand slam. And you know that was something that then. I don't know how to describe, but you don't feel anything. I mean, you don't feel anything. You you, you feel like you're flying around the base, and that was, a, you know, one of the moments that I, I ever, uh, you know, feeling in my uh, pro career, major league career as a playoff. John. Probably the the whole experience stands out, but the, specifically the second game of the 
National League Championship Series um, was probably more important, more nerve-wracking for sure. Uh, the series was more fun. There was less nerves because you got where you wanted to go. Um, but I think that game probably stands out as the single most important one in my postseason career. Mike, I believe you're next. Uh, Mike Fitzpatrick from the Associated Press. Uh, Ronnie, you mentioned how you, you come into the homes of Met fans you know, every night. The, the, younger, the youngest of those fans now have never got to experience Shea Stadium. And you know, all you guys got to play there in, in, uh, in, in different eras. And, and like I said, those young fans, they, they really don't know of it that much. Can you guys each just share a memory of that ballpark or something that stands out about playing there and what it was like? Well, my memory uh, it's, seems to be always the same, and that is uh, um, preparing for a game and um, getting ready and handing the ball to Mel Stottlemyre and walking down in the bowels of the stadium on that cement, John will remember that, and your spikes just <coughs> clickety-clacking, and it was deafening so loud because, you know, the pitching coach not saying anything, you're not saying anything as you're preparing to do your job. And um, you'd walk up those steps and across that brutal astro turf that I don't think they ever changed, um, and then down into the into the dugout, where you know the, your players that are going to play that day are chomping at the bit, ready to go. I don't know. Well, that's that's the memory I'll always have of Shea Stadium because it was just um, you made that you know that long walk, and then when you got in that dugout, the field just opened up to you, and it was just. Boy, this is this is why we're here to do this. Edgardo, it was John. I thought we were going for. A, I'm the rookie here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, like I said before, Shea Stadium was my uh, my office. <laughs> that was uh, that was a great place to to play. Uh, um, I think uh, one thing to come into my mind right now was when 2000 we went to. Um, we beat um, San Francisco and and San Luis um, going to the World Series, and I remember that play was bouncing. You know, we mm -hmm. thought that the play is going to come down because the fans really enjoy that moment. And and we as a player, uh, I remember w uh, walking through the tunnel like like Ron says, uh, and you see the the bouncing uh, of the people. Enjoy that moment. You as a player, you feel so so happy because you give the the fans uh, and that special place uh, a great joy, you know. And that was something then then I never forget about it about Shea Stadium. Uh, you know, walk to that tunnel every day, come to the clubhouse, and as soon as you walk to the field, you see the fans there, you know, waiting for you, and and you as a player try to give the best to them. John, you're next on this one. I feel like Shea was home. I mean, you walked out on that field, up on that mound, it was pitcher's heaven. Uh, there was noise to distract the hitters <laughs> from the fans and from the planes. Um, <laughs> there was uh, usually damp, heavy air, a big field, tall grass. Uh, mound was always perfection. It just felt comfortable to be there. It was home. Gentlemen, John, Ron, Edgardo, congratulations. Everybody is really looking forward to tonight's ceremony. Thank you for being here. Reggie, congratulations to you. Thank you all uh, as well uh, for being here. And we will uh, see you a little later on tonight. Everybody on the dais will be available for a little bit in this room. And uh, thanks again.